Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Oh, there yes. we go. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so crazy because I, I can't wait to, let's put this yeah. differently. Because I, I um, wait, how I can put this a little bit. The time in the screen. I'm in the, I'm in the, in a funny apartment. Everything about this apartment is Ikea. It's from the very famous tenor called, wait. Yeah, you called just called the, uh, yeah. There we go. Called, called how, his name, the uh, Kaufman. He's mm -hmm. a tenor, you know, here in, in Germany. And, um, and then he's going to the countryside and then I'm in this place just opposite of opera. Because so I've been rehearsing. Are you meant to, you were there because you were meant to, you're supposed to have your, your exhibition there, right? No, no, opera, opera. There's I'm directing opera. Seven Deaths of Maria Callas with every single, you know, woman dying for love. <laughs> it's, it's almost early April. One more week and then we are finished. But police stop rehearsals, so we are waiting now. And I'm waiting in this tiny little place, you know, it's eating my own food, walking a little bit and being very much, you know, in solitude. The, the Todd is in, uh, in uh, uh, Pittsburgh, you know, because he, could, he, he actually left to see his son and he could not come back anymore. Right. But so are, you alone, are you alone in the apartment or are you with the cast? There's nobody here, just okay. me. Just we you. are really in a quarantine. Actually, I love being alone. I'm fine. I know with you that. do. Well, you always say that you must be distant from from an audience, from people, in order to be better at your craft, right? Yes, and and when you're alone, it's so much concentrated. And but how are you doing alone? I mean, no, you the the, the no, Alexander is there. He's there. My parents are here, and we're coexisting. Yeah, we have our little our little routines. I think the hardest thing is finding a routine that works for all of us separately, but then combine combines us at certain times of the day where we can, I don't know, feel like we are together, that we can work and be creative, but then at the end of each day we get together and we cook. I'm trying to cook. My mom is helping <laughs> every evening. Um, everyone has little chores that they do, and we haven't we went on a hike a couple of weeks ago and then decided we weren't going to do that so we're working out in the basement trying to stay active drinking every night <laughs> <laughs> i i i have i don't know I, I really you don't drink. if there's a time to, you don't drink right i don't drink i i really i i drink actually what i do i drink hot water with the ginger and the turmeric you know really hot water the all day long and then in the, okay my routine is very simple i wake up in the morning first i sleep 10 hours it's That's unbelievable great. never sleep in so long in my entire life why do you and think my that blood, because i have no stress anymore and and also you know i there's this problem with lyme disease and my high blood pressure was high now my blood pressure is perfect i sleep 10 hours I wake up, I do exercises, you know, I have on the internet, I have an application, so I do the ups and abdomen and, you know, really, they're really hardcore, so I have sore everywhere. <laughs> then, you have an exercise routine that you do? Yes, I do, you know, the really like, a, I do 150 uh, sit-ups, I'm really, you know, the, the I do the, 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 how you call, the sets of 50 that kind of makes me exhausted and then <laughs> that is so old school no i do push-ups and then i have a two bottles of half a liter of mineral water so it's my weights you know i'm using okay. weights then i have the breakfast is papaya and black tea and then i don't have anything i have lunch but i don't have dinner dinner i just have miso soup or something simple you know i'm also also like to lose the weight i mean this is like for me like a spa are you, you know, using this time to take care of your body and your and yourself? Yeah, completely. You know, the taking baths and and uh, facials and all kinds of stuff. But apart from all this, it's it's really interesting to think about the situation, why this is happening, and you know, the, of course, it's terrible. People are dying and it's dangerous and all that. But there is a really transformation in the spirit of the entire planet. Something's happening. Everybody is it's you know doing things they've never done before to really be with themselves and to reflect on, on 
existence of life or, or meaning of life or everything, you know. And I think after this, not is going to be the same. No. It's amazing because it's as if things are something when you're at home, it seems like things are the same because you go on with your routine and you attempt to go on with your routine and you're trying to make it as normal as possible. But when you're exposed to anything on a screen or in a computer that shows you news, that shows you statistics, that shows you the death rates, it hits you so hard. And yet you're, you're trying to protect yourself and you're trying to stay in this confined space within your own body and your mind and trying to see the positive in it, right? Yeah, it's true, but I, I, I decide only to look the news, news in the morning and never look in the evening and never look before I'm going to sleep right. and not look anything upsetting. So that's really important. I think it's so important to keep your body healthy as possible. Today, I, I went to take the test. I, I don't have any symptoms, but here in Germany, which is the most safe place in the world, I think, they're so organized, so you just can take tests to, to, to see if you're positive or whatever is happening. So I will know the result in three days. And uh, it's so incredibly, you know, disciplinated. You know, everything is, uh, you, the streets are empty. All the windows of the shops are empty. So you just can't walk and kind of the, the, the window shop. You can't because there's no any, any information about anything, you know. Right. And um, it's quite interesting. I actually... Quite lucky to work one month. I was working here in Germany on opera. So every morning I would go and rehearse in, in huge empty stage in empty city. But now, now it's changed. So I have to really be alone. And how, how do you see the world changing when we do come back to a new normal? What will change? How will your perspective that, change? I think that you can't really. Um, Forget when uh, when you when you say, when you see things that you actually could not do. You can't forget that you could not go to the restaurant. You can't forget that you could not work. You can't forget that, that, that so many people die around you. The sickness, the danger, also the fear. You know that we have the pollution of the of the, of the planet. That we actually just by not working we can save the planet. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. Or not to, not mean working, but stopping, stopping shopping, stopping driving the cars stopping using all this te technological stuff that actually you know that we, we have now clean ozone layer around the planet it's kind of amazing so it means if we are together and connected just not you know not to one country but all the countries together we can make huge changes that knowledge is is you i think people should really don't forget yeah it's tough because i, I feel like when someone says ready, set, go, and we're able to go outside and go back to what we were up to before this, such as your, you know, such as the opera for me, it was working on my company and having face-to-face -face meetings that once we have the trust of travel and being around people again, it's hard to think, well, wait, we were doing something that actually helped our environment, right? Wouldn't we want to go back to what we had because we underappreciated it? I know, but in the same time, if we don't change our consciousness, we, we, it's going to be the end of this planet. So it's very simple. We have to make a very, very kind of a conscious choices of what, what, what we want. And, you know, the, in, in the next hundred years, maybe it's all the, in that we, we, we have to look for another, another planet to move on. Because this one is, is, is going to be so damaged, polluted, uh, the water rising. Uh, sea melting, uh, the spaces are you know gone. I mean, it's just really sad. So somehow we we have to be more conscious how beautiful this planet is, and how incredible we are lucky that we are here. So we we have to we we have to change the the way we think, and not not just the society but the individual level. If every person from this experience come with some resolution and some change of mind. Mm -hmm. we, we can do better. Tell me about um, going back to Belgrade end of last year and seeing your work. I, I believe your work traveled around the world for three years, right? And, and it's last. <laughs> yeah. it's, last and, you know, it was in me, coming to Belgrade and the name of the show is so appropriate. It's called 
in, in the Serbian is called Chistač, which means the cleaner. So it was in a way, you know, cleaning everything, cleaning past, cleaning the memories, cleaning the emotions, cleaning my own life, you know, to show the work. And I never showed there for 40, I don't know, 48 years or something. I never been showing my work. So it was difficult, you know, there was lots of bad criticism and good criticism. It was nothing, nothing in between. It was all bad or good, you know, it was like the most emotional for me was my lecture that I did for six and a half thousand people outside of the museum in the field in total silence and so many young people. So really, I felt that my work have resonance with young audience and my generation could never understand what I'm doing, sitting and doing nothing and have all attention. They will never understand that. <laughs> they think that, that, you know, performance art is not art in the first place. Because going back to when I read your book um, a couple of years ago, and as I got to know you a little bit more, but the book really, if there's one word that I can, um, I wish I had it here, but I gave it to a friend of mine to read. Um, like one word that described all the pages in the book is your strength. Like no matter what experience you went through in your life, whether it was your upbringing, whether it was your curiosity, whether it was testing your body to a certain limit, you were able to yeah, always but, you know who's, who's talking to me about the strengths look at you <laughs> you, you, you you know to to achieve what you achieved my dear you had so much sacrifice so much willingness so much discipline because otherwise you know it's it's incredible people think that that uh, that uh, the achievement just come by itself it's so much work you know, and if, if you think about you, how how much work you, you actually made in training to, to, to get to these points in, in, in your career. It's so, you know. Reading that book a couple of years ago and then um, watching some of the videos of you going back to Belgrade, I, I remembered reading how your, you know, how your experience in the beginning of your career where people didn't quite understand what you were doing right, especially in Belgrade. They were questioning your motives. Still don't, I mean, still don't. <laughs> All these years, there is a but certain now, generation. But, but it's almost that the, they wanna see it because you've been doing it for so long and you've, you've touched, the, the, they see the way that you touch people and hearts and this raw emotion that you bring. And you can say that they don't, but I, I know that they respect you incredibly, or else you wouldn't have received, was it 150,000 people that saw it? Yeah, they went, there was really, I mean, there was really waiting on the, on the outside just to go in the last days was in huge lines, that's true. But then again, you know, the, 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 the criticism which I received, it was a criticism that, that the certain generation of, of the really artists who are doing painting and, you know, the, 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 in, in a way, the, the traditional artwork could never understand how, how I came to this point in my life where I am now. But for them, you know, an artist is present, I just sit on the chair. They can't believe I'm doing nothing and to get their attention. They will never understand that. They will kill them, but they will never understand that. And, uh, and, and then, you know, and then you have this, uh, the, the young people, but not just from art public, but general public, who are really generally interested in the work and, and wanted to understand. And for them, I give this lecture. I was lecture was two hours, and it was so incredibly emotional to me to, uh, you know, I don't think any living artist talked to six and a half thousand people. This was like a boost talk of art. It was so, it was like a sea of... of, of, of but was like, art, but you don't think that part of that emotion was because you did begin to feel that they appreciated what you were doing and that they... they yeah, the, yes, but again, you know, the, 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 everybody was there, you know, in anything between, between 18 and 35, that's the generation, but not my generation, okay? I am maybe much older, so my generation was not there. I was asking, who is the oldest pe person in the public? Oldest person in the public was 53. And the youngest person in the public was 12. <laughs> I asked when I, before I start lecture, just to know. But this is not the, you know, the, the important thing is, I think in, in work is to never give up, whatever you do, you know, and, and go to the point when you say, okay, this is my limit. And then, and then, then do something else, you know, that's how the life is. 
is about. Uh, tell, I, me, I, tell me about your company, what you're doing now, because I, have no, I, I only know that... I, that you, I, um, I left my sport a couple of months ago, or now I don't know how long it's been. I retired a few weeks ago. Yes, I know. I was in every newspaper we, we, I saw. It. <laughs> so it was, that happened. Um, and I felt this so interesting because I felt this wave of I'm ready for another challenge. I'm ready to go. And actually, it was the opposite of what I thought I would want when I would finish my career. And I, I thought I would want this, this time of reflection and to give my body a break and my mind a break. But when I, you know, when I told the world that this was the end, I felt this like, I don't know, surge inside of me that I wanted, I wanted to take on something new. And because I put my body through so much stress over the years, um, that new was about challenging my mind, and and it has been business for the last few years. Um, yeah, yeah. So challenging my and what ways. what what exactly. So investment opportunities um, and helping companies grow that one, I'm either passionate about or two, that I can either help um, or three, that I have an interest in, um, in growing, um, whether that's technology, whether that's a consumer good. Um, I like the process of seeing how an idea comes from an image, a picture, a drawing, and then how it's turns out to be a product that's sold on the shelves and then understanding how the trends in which consumers purchase that how do they use that in their life how does that transition to sales um so i'm i'm, I'm navigating that i've had a, a candy business for seven years now and i'm i'm the ceo i work on the the daily operations of that so a part of this you know oh, you're training for that. did what? you get a training for that you to do that I, if you if you put me to the company, I will never know what to do at, at all, and totally not possible for me. It's How you knew to do that? I never had a formal education. Like I, I, I was never in in school where I I was in front of people that were professors and that knew that subject and taught me. I really learned. I, I would say I'm street smart, so I'm not maybe as educated as a lot of people um, are in a room, like in a meeting that I attend. But because I come from an outside perspective, I feel like I ask questions that maybe people that are in it every single day wouldn't necessarily ask. Um, I'm also fearless, so I don't, I don't mind being there and feeling like maybe I don't belong in this moment. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm realistic, um, I'm raw. So, and I think that with that, I learn a lot. I'm like a sponge. I love learning. Um, and I think that's really But this is really great. Because, uh, you know, the, the fresh point of view, this is what they need. Because they normally they will always go the same pattern, same way. But you think out the box. So that's fresh yeah, for them. I try to. And I'm interested. I feel like a young, uh, I feel like a student that's just finished school, that's finished this one chapter. <laughs> their life which for me was you know 28 years of, of a sport but I do feel that I'm in this phase where um, I was ready for more for more of something and this period of time has just told me you know what relax exhale think of the future but don't let it you know don't get ahead of yourself you know this is not this is not the the time for that so no it, it's like life it's, it's such strange timing right like i stopped and now you know i can't even watch tennis on tv like i there's a big part of me that misses it but then there's no sporting event going on in the world and it's so it's so odd right it's incredible everything's canceled absolutely everything's canceled this is another interesting thing of the vacuum that we live in. Like there, there is no, you can't go to cinema, you can't go to the restaurant, you can't see the events, you can't go to the theater to see nothing. You absolutely, the, the culture is zero. Which I miss the most. Which I miss the most. I, I, what I miss the most. Wow, what I miss the most. Normality. <laughs> Normality. That, you know, that if I really wanted to eat, uh, beautiful piece of fish <laughs> here is just a great restaurant it's just closed and there was such a great grill dorada 
with a little spinach, which I was dreaming to eat, and I just can't go and eat, you know. And then, you know, and then, you know, my age group, they told me it's very dangerous to go to supermarket, very dangerous to buy the food. So here's the farmer market outside, so which is like outdoor. So I go there and buy vegetables and I cook every single meal, you know, it's crazy. I've never been cooking so much, but now I'm cooking. And then also the, the conscious what you're eating, how you actually feel good with the food, when you eat lots of greens and salads and, you know, nuts and, and you feel light and you feel, you, you, you are, you're very sharp and right. your mind is better. Right. So that's all the stuff. So I didn't eat any, any, any meat, any fish, uh, just nothing, just really, just, not because of, of choice. I just, I just know where to buy at the moment. You also, because you have a, you have a huge res retrospect coming up next year, right? This it was this year, but it's postponed for the next year. It's supposed to be in September, you know, in Royal Academy, and it's postponed. And it's so funny that I'm busy so much with dying. So many people are dying now. That, that, that my opera is called Seven Deaths of Maria Callas, and my uh, my uh, the retrospective the in the Royal Academy with lots of new work is called Afterlife. So now Afterlife becomes something really like almost prediction of future. What we're going to do? When we when we start having the different life, it's another afterlife to think about. And do you change your perspective on how you've used your body as a canvas and drawing people in to this personal relationships within your work as we're physical distancing and we're apart from one another? Your work, so much of it, is experiencing this with other people and being you know, whether it's through an energy, whether it's through eye contact, um, body contact, so much of your work. Exactly. Been this is a how, great do you, how do you get that? Huge, you get that huge problem. You know, like now we was even suggesting to do live stream opera in the front of the totally empty theater is 3,000 seats. I, I could not do it. I could not do something in empty theater. I need the public. Public. I live for public. And also, you know, my public is, in, in my relation with the public is so physical. I mean, people see me in the street, they just hug me and hold me and, you know, and we, and, and we just cry each other and, you know, touch. And, and this is like incredible. Like now I see some people that I know on the street and we keep this distance. It's so unnatural. So I, I, I don't know. I'm a very hugging person to me and, and you know so so uh, uh, slavic people kiss and hug and touch and, and this is like to me the, the actually if you ask me what i miss the more i think i miss the more not normality but i miss more that the, the personal content the human content that, that we are not afraid of being touched by other people mm -hmm. and here is like such a such a huge I restriction i remember you telling me a couple of years ago when we wanted to make plans to go to your home in upstate and I said, oh, it would be so nice to just relax. And you, and you said to me, relax? <laughs> what do <are> you mean? <laughs> but listen, these plans we have to absolutely do. Said. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're going to do that in the future, promise. Maria, I, mean, I would love to, but I have a feeling that we're not going to relax, that we're going to be constantly active. And I'm going to be part of an experiment that I don't know what that looks like yet. <laughs> God, the, I, I can teach you to relax. I'm good in relaxation. But honestly, like I now, I don't want to go to America. It's really very, it's very difficult. Now it's such a huge problem this, this, this next two weeks. But I hope it may to go to the countryside upstate. You know, I really want to see the trees with the with the with the spring coming and seeing the blooming and flowers and you know just everything changing. It's it's like even the nature is 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 in danger. Like now, the you can get the the, the virus, the, the the animals can get the virus from the human. It's like it's like become such a. But I also believe that this came out of nowhere. And it's going to disappear. In, into some kind of thin air. I believe in that. Uh, let, let's hope. <laughs> that's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's hope. That's the most optimism but, I've heard about it. <laughs> the, the, and then also, we are in the planetary talk, astrologically, you know, this coming tomorrow is very difficult day. It's a full moon in the, in the, in the balance, you know, the balance, the, the, this is zodiac sign. And it's, uh, 
and it's a difficult constellation, you know, coming with all next week. You have to, you have to, you have to be relaxed, and um, and you can become very emotional. Don't take this uh, personally. It's, it's because of moon. That's you not. You know, if the moon, if the moon can move the the water in in the ocean, you know, full moon move the water in the ocean. Can you imagine our body? We're seventy percent of the water, so our emotions are always on the edge around full moon. So whatever happened in the full moon, you know, don't count as a, as a serious thing. Just it will pass by. Okay, that's that's good. It's tough not to take things personally when you're but, under one roof. But listen, our conversation, are we going to edit it or are we just going to leave like this? No, why edit it? I love this. No, I'm just thinking, did we say anything? I didn't tell any joke. How can I tell you joke? Okay. <laughs> We're not editing, so... <laughs> Okay, the joke then. Okay. And the joke is, is an Italian joke. Italian man is in the bathroom and he's trimming his perfect mustache. He's putting lotion on his hair. He is dressing the absolute, absolute the, 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 the great Armani shirt. He's putting some eau de cologne around his, his ears. And his wife comes to the bathroom and says, what, what do you think where you're going? And he said, oh, nowhere, just to make coffee in the kitchen. <laughs> this is quarantine joke. <laughs> I love that one. I always say politically non-correct okay. jokes. But this You're, is so where do you get, you always send us these um, GIFs and memes. And do you spend like a few hours of your day researching like the funniest content on the internet? No, the people send me incredibly funny stuff. If you if you permit me, can I send you inappropriate stuff too? No, just <laughs> you send the inappropriate to Alexander and the appropriate to me, <laughs> but but we, we both share it. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking I I have to <laughs> I have to. This is really true. I will say I send you what I send you the cartoon of Tom and Jerry. Send me a lately. Tom and Jerry cartoon, which which was my favorite cartoon growing up. So I appreciated that. But I have really other stuff. But it's true. I said, I said to, I said to, I didn't realize that you're sharing. Of course, you're sharing. It. So you get everything. Okay, no filter anymore. No I promise, no filter. But, but now you, you're in Los Angeles, so, so you, you have no idea how it's going to stay like this. Yeah, you don't know anything. I think for, I mean, we're we're saying probably June. And we had we had a lot of plans to go to Europe over the summer. I don't know how that. Yeah, will, yeah, yeah. How that will You be. know, I, I am so much in Europe here because I, I was in London, then I was you know now in Munich for so long because lots of work was in Europe. But now I'm really looking forward to to go to my country, to my home, because yeah. I've been just like a, like a nomadic gypsy, modern gypsy running around the world, and you know I'm the same clothes since months and months and now spring is coming i don't have summer clothes the shops are closed you can't buy anything here it's like really it's like no nothing is open you only can buy socks in the supermarket good for a credit card reset uh, sorry what you say that is probably a good thing for our credit card reset Oh yes, the credit card didn't use it for anything. <laughs> the, the only thing that I go is pharmacy and supermarket, you know, the two places that open in, in this country. And, and I've been in pharmacy already buying all kinds of creams and bullshit that I don't need, but <laughs> new shampoo, you know, shampoo. they're very good, <laughs> where, things like where that. Would be, where would be the first place that you would want to travel to when you have the capability to do so? India. In, I love India so much. I, I really, because you know, I was planning to, that this year is supposed to be very busy for me. And next year, I was thinking to be my sabbatical, the first time in my entire life to take at least half a year off, at least three months off, let's say, be more realistic. You just went and, from <laughs> a year to six months to three months. Yeah, I know, first <laughs> six months, three. But let's see. And then, and then I will go to India. I really wanted to go. But I, uh, but now, you know, India is also even more difficult. I think the crisis is not even reached India yet. And so it's, I would like to go to India. But right now, my, my dream is just to go to my countryside house, really, to, and to be there and see the spring. I love spring. I, you know, I planted last year lots of trees. Every year I plant more trees. 
and I want to see them how they, they bloom and grow and you know to talk to them you know they say when with your lawn if you talk to your plants it's okay but if the plants answer to you then you should really look for doctor <laughs> so I'm still talking to plants they didn't talk to me back yet how is it how about you did, any, did you talk to your plants <laughs> maybe that's a good do you have a garden do you have a garden? Do you have a garden? A little garden with a, I wouldn't say it's a garden. It's a, it's a field of grass and a little pool. Okay, but then you, do you have a tree to sit under the tree? I have no tree. a tree. Yes, I have a eucalyptus tree. Should oh, good. that's beautiful. The tree? And you know, eucalyptus and the pine tree are the trees who have the best possible energy. And if you lie under this tree, you get energized your new field, your energetic field. The problem with the eucalyptus tree is that it's on the driveway, so it might... It oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the wrong thing. It would be slightly odd if I lay down on the... <laughs> don't, drive, don't drive a driveway. I think, I think we, should, we should have our next conversation only about the funniest jokes we receive because I think humor is very important in this time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you 10 of my favorites okay. of the all I receive. And, uh, and then we, we share them. Out. And then we share them and we figure out something. We feel, you know, people have to love a lot because it's, it's you know, it's, when loving is such a beneficial and create, create positive, positive attitude about life. And we can't change anything. It's the first time we are not in any control. We, we are not in the control, really not. No. And that's something which is very unusual for us because we always want to be in control. I think if there's a person that's, that knows how to handle that is you. <laughs> I am actually in an extreme good mood these days. <laughs> I, I don't know. There is something that, that you know, I, I take every day as a present. Because you never know what's happening the next day. And this is the only way to do it. Just live day by day. Don't think next. You know, when I do long duration performance, if I think on time, that will be the biggest mistake of life. You can't say when it's going to finish. You just be in the present. And this is my, so this is the end of our conversation. Talking about the present, be in the present. Yeah, it, it's kind of, a, it feels like a contradicting energy because so much of what you do is about being present but then letting go and so much of what we're trying to do right now is accept the situation although we're trying to fight it slightly um but letting it resolve and and allowing us to get back to our our normal lifestyles but and you know it's really good to breathe i'm going to send you something recalling gong music for the bath so you just lie on the ground and listen to this and and, and actually the the gongs Tibetan balls create some kind of vibrational sound that you feel like you, you're taking the sound sound cleaning up of the system. I'm going to send you right now when we finish okay, the story. So, so what I'm going to be doing is going out on my driveway, laying down under my eucalyptus tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be driving by the car, please. <laughs> and listening to gong music. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, that's it. This is, this is what we do. Okay. okay. So I think I think that's a great way to end this conversation. It's just the images yes. in the driveway, like taking the gong music I, in and looking at the, the tree leaves of a eucalyptus. Perfect. Okay. That, and that's it, the ten my favorite jokes. And I will listen to the jokes. Yes. And this is and you're my first Zoom conversation because I'm I didn't so, know how this I'm so was. happy to have introduced you to Zoom. <laughs> I can't believe you introduced me but because I am telling you I am my generation is Xerox the, the telegram and uh, and um, what it was and telegram Xerox and fax this was all what I knew really how it works so this is all new for me anyway so anyway, congratulations love. um stay safe my love. Oh, Alexander sends his love he misses you yes so no anymore, I will not anymore correct the jokes for no, you more deep. No filter. Okay. Okay. No filter. I'm doing this. <laughs> okay. Kiss for me. How we how Hi. we stop now? No idea. What we do? Oh uh <laughs> Marina, 
<laughs> you, I'm gonna end it, so it will end on its own. Okay, all okay. right, because I might be able to press. Okay, bye, <laughs> bye, 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 bye. <laughs>